I would rather be a superb meteor than a sleepy and permanent planet, Jack London. Hello, dear friends. In today's video, we would like to tell you about planets, or more precisely, about exoplanets. In this video, you will get acquainted with and learn about the most unusual exoplanets in the universe. Get comfortable and let's begin. Hot Jupiters Let's start by discussing the structure of our solar system. The four rocky planets are located closest to the Sun, followed by the asteroid belt, then the two gas giants and two ice giants. Beyond them are regions filled with icy bodies and comets. Astronomers used to explain this arrangement simply. When our Sun was forming, its radiation pushed lighter elements like hydrogen and helium away. As a result, heavier elements remained closer to our star, forming the rocky planets while the gas giants formed further away. However, the discovery of the first full-fledged exoplanet in 1995 challenged this explanation. The orbit of this gas giant was located only a few million kilometers from its star, whereas Mercury, for example, never gets closer to the Sun than 48 million kilometers. It quickly became evident that this was not an exception, and such exoplanets are quite common in the Milky Way. They are commonly referred to as hot Jupiters. Hot Jupiters possess some of the most extreme conditions known to us. Their atmospheres are heated to colossal temperatures, reaching hundreds or even thousands of degrees, something even some stars would envy. The current record holder is the gas giant Kelt, 9b, with a temperature of 4,300 dexy. In comparison, the surface temperature of, say, Proxima Centauri is 2,700 degrees Celsius. Since hot Jupiters are in tidal lock and always face their star with the same side, this creates ferocious winds between their day and night hemispheres. Additionally, these worlds have very exotic compositions in their gas envelopes. For example, in the atmosphere of Kelt 9b, atoms of iron and titanium have been found. On the night side, they likely condense into clouds, from which metallic rains pour down. On the gas giant hat P7b, it is speculated that it rains rubies and sapphires. The origin of hot Jupiters is still a subject of scientific debate. According to a popular hypothesis, these planets originally formed at much larger distances from their stars, but later migrated towards the center of their systems due to gravitational instability. On the other hand, some scientists suggest that hot Jupiters may have formed directly on their current orbits through the accretion of material from the protoplanetary disk onto massive rocky bodies that served as their core. Lava Worlds In addition to hot Jupiters, our galaxy hosts rocky exoplanets with orbits so close to their stars that their surface, at least the day side, resembles a lava ocean. A classic example of such a world is Corot 7b. The orbit of this exoplanet is only 2.5 million kilometers from its star. As a result, its day side is heated to 2500 indexi, comparable to the temperature of the aforementioned Proxima Centauri. This is above the melting point of iron and most known minerals, so the illuminated side of Corot 7b likely looks like a continuous giant lava ocean. As for the night side, it is cooler, of course, relative to this world, and there should be a solid surface. However, the immense heating on the day side has its consequences. The vapor from the lava ocean likely transfers to the night hemisphere, where it condenses and falls as a constant rain of rock. Super-Earths and Mini-Neptunes Looking at the characteristics of planets in the solar system, one can observe a noticeable gap between Earth and Uranus. The latter's mass is 14.5 times greater than that of our planet. Within our solar system, there are no bodies located in the range between these two objects. However, they are found around other stars. They are referred to as super-Earths and mini-Neptunes. Super-Earths are rocky exoplanets with masses greater than Earth's. For a long time, it was believed that their radii could not exceed 1.6 times that of Earth. However, Astronomers recently discovered a record-breaking super-Earth known as Toy 1075b that slightly raised this limit. Its radius is 1.8 times larger and its mass is 10 times that of Earth. 
Many Neptunes are bodies with rocky cores surrounded by extensive mantles composed of light substances like ice, water, ammonia, or their mixture. Some of these mini-Neptunes are believed to be giant ocean planets, similar to Miller's planet from the movie Interstellar. Regarding their physical characteristics, their radii range from 1.7 to 4 times that of Earth. Larger exoplanets usually turn into icy or gaseous giants, similar to those found in the solar system. Tatooine-like exoplanets Our Sun is a single star, but approximately half of the stars in the universe have companions. Not long ago, astronomers debated whether such systems could have their own exoplanets. Many scientists believed that due to the gravitational influence of two stars, planets either wouldn't form or would be quickly ejected from their systems. Now we know that these ideas were mistaken. While planets around single stars are much more common, their presence in binary systems is not a unique case. Astronomers have already discovered several dozens of such worlds. Some orbit around one of the stars in the system, while others revolve around a pair. Moreover, astronomers have found exoplanets in systems with three or even four stars. For example, the gas giant Phone B orbits one of the two pairs of stars in the Kepler-64 system. Science fiction movies have led us to believe that exoplanets in multiple star systems should resemble desolate deserts similar to the famous Tatooine from Star Wars, but that's not necessarily the case. In reality, with the right orbit and atmosphere, such a celestial body could have conditions suitable for life just with a slightly different sky than on our Earth. Rogue Planets in complete contrast to Tatooine-like exoplanets are the so-called free-floating planets, also known as rogue planets. These are objects that do not orbit around any specific star. Currently, astronomers have very little information about rogue planets, and rightfully so, as finding such bodies is incredibly challenging. The transit method and the radial velocity method are entirely useless for detecting free-floating planets. Most of the known rogue planets have been discovered through direct imaging. These objects are massive and still radiate significant amounts of infrared radiation due to their recent formation and high temperature. What about older and smaller rogue planets? In 2020, astronomers reported the discovery of a free-floating planet called like this with a mass comparable to that of Earth. It was found using the gravitational microlensing method. Most likely, this planet is just the tip of the iceberg. Estimates suggest that there could be between 100 to 100,000 similar rogue planets for each star in the Milky Way. As for how these bodies originate, according to the prevailing view, the vast majority of them were once part of stellar systems, but were then ejected into interstellar space through various gravitational perturbations. Our solar system likely contributed to the population of wandering worlds as well. Computer modeling suggests that in its early days, it may have had not four, but five giant planets, one of which was later ejected. However, it's worth noting that astronomers also consider the possibility that some rogue planets never belong to any stellar system and formed independently during the collapse of gas and dust clouds. Compact systems Another intriguing discovery by astronomers is that many exoplanetary systems are much more compact than our own. To simplify, one can say that, in the solar system, the distance between each subsequent planet approximately doubles. However, several systems have been found with five, six, or even more planets, and their orbits could easily fit inside the orbit of Mercury. A classic example of such a system is TRAPPIST-1. It consists of a red dwarf star around which at least seven rocky exoplanets orbit. Their orbits are within a range of just over 7 million kilometers. Therefore, standing on the surface of any of the seven TRAPPIST exoplanets, an observer could see all the others in the sky and probably even discern their major geological features with the naked eye. In contrast, in our solar system, the distance between the first seven planets is 2.8 billion kilometers, about 400 times larger. Another interesting example is the Kepler-90 system. It consists of a yellow dwarf star and eight exoplanets whose orbits are approximately equivalent to the distance between the Sun and Earth. 
The question of how such compact systems manage to maintain stability is also a subject of debate. The objects within them are subjected to much stronger gravitational influences from neighboring planets than the planets in our solar system. Most likely, one of the reasons for the stability of systems like TRAPPIST-1 is that their exoplanets are in orbital resonances. This means that the periods of their orbits around the star are related as whole numbers. In other words, while the first exoplanet completes eight orbits around the star, the second one completes exactly five orbits, and so on. How unique is the solar system? All the examples above lead to a natural question. How typical or atypical is the solar system compared to other stellar systems? It is essential to make an important caveat. Current methods for detecting exoplanets are best suited for finding massive bodies close to their stars with short orbital period. It is much easier to find a hot Jupiter that transits its star's disk every week than once every 20 years. Therefore, the observed picture cannot be considered complete. Of course, as observation accuracy improves and new telescopes come into operation, astronomers gradually fill in the missing pieces of the puzzle, but many aspects still elude their view. Nevertheless, the confirmation of 5,000 exoplanets to date is a significant number that allows for some preliminary conclusions Cautiously speaking, on one hand, it can be noted that our solar system follows the basic rules that govern other stellar systems. Yes, it lacks hot Jupiters or super-Earths, but its fundamental elements resemble what astronomers have found around other stars. On the other hand, from the perspective of the overall configuration of planets, the solar system still notably differs from the majority of known exoplanetary systems. The main reason lies in the combination of Jupiter and Saturn. These gas giants effectively balance each other, allowing for a stable setup without interference with the Sun. It is possible that many of the systems we know initially had a significant population of inner rocky worlds that were later destroyed during the migration of gas giants, subsequently transforming into hot Jupiter. Another important characteristic of the solar system is that the orbits of all its planets are close to circular and lie in the same plane. In contrast, Many known exoplanets have orbits characterized by high eccentricities. Moreover, scientists have already found planets with polar orbits around their star. Again, it is believed that the stabilizing influence of Jupiter and Saturn contributed to the solar system's favorable configuration for the development of life on Earth. Of course, it's important to keep in mind that the arrangement of Jupiter and Saturn alone is not unique. Current estimates suggest that giant exoplanets tend to be located between 1 and 10 astronomical units. This means from 150 to 1500 million kilometers from their stars. For comparison, Jupiter's orbit is at a distance of 5 AU from the Sun, and Saturn's is at 9 AU. So the final appearance of a stellar system will depend on the combination of various factors. Changing any of them could completely transform it. Naturally, with each passing year, Astronomers' capabilities to study extrasolar worlds increase significantly. This means there are many exciting discoveries ahead. Most likely, astronomers will find many systems that are entirely different from our solar system, as well as systems that could be considered its full-fledged twin. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it and subscribe to the channel. Let us know in the comments if you would like to learn how astronomers discover exoplanets. Also, leave us your suggestions for what you would like to see in the next video. Thank you, and see you next time.